Okay, so what I wanted to do today was just basically have a look at using a MIDI keyboard controller in GarageBand. So a lot of people have MIDI controllers or are thinking of getting MIDI controllers and wondering, you know, will it work? You don't have to worry about that. Most MIDI controllers are uh, cross compliant. And so that just means basically you can plug them in and GarageBand is going to know exactly what to do with that MIDI controller. So I'm just going to show you quickly how you can uh, look at using a MIDI controller and then quickly editing the MIDI within. So if this is something that you're interested in, hit the like button below, letting YouTube know, and then hit the subscribe link also if you want to see more videos like this related to GarageBand, home recording, mobile recording, and all other kinds of things that fall into that play. So thanks for being here. Let's check this out. This is basically what I've got happening here. I've got uh, uh, an 808 uh, going in with the drum kit, and then I've got a synth piano happening. Okay, I don't have the sound set up just yet, but once we go into the instrument, you'll see what I mean. So what I've got set up here is I've got a powered USB hub, and that is what my Akai MPK Mini and my audio interface are connected to. Now I use a powered USB hub because the USB interface is using a little bit more power than what the iPad wants to give for a USB interface. So that's fine. Uh, so that's why I recommend using a powered USB interface and I'll put a link in the description below for a couple of good ones. And uh, otherwise, if I wasn't using that interface, I would be using just a standard four port USB hub and I'll put the link for this too. So I just wanted to be able to do that so I could use a microphone and monitor it at the same time while being able to play the keyboard into GarageBand. So that gives me multiple uh, recorded tracks at once by using an interface. So now basically what I'm going to do is just show you quickly how I can get the keypad, uh, keyboard, sorry, working in GarageBand. And I'll do that just by hitting the keyboard there. Pretty straightforward, really. So if I hit record, That was awful. But anyway, you get the idea. So basically, as soon as I plug this in, uh, the iPad will power the Akai MPK Mini provided it's connected to a USB hub. If you try and connect the MPK Mini directly into GarageBand without a USB hub, you might get a little error message pop up there that says that it's drawing too much power. Uh, so use a, a USB hub and you'll avoid that problem altogether. Now, uh, if I go back to my track layout here, okay, here's my hits. So if I just click on that and hit edit, this brings me into my MIDI editing screen. So quite simply, what I can do here is I can take these and I can move them around, okay, however I want, and I can actually change the velocity as well. So if I click on velocity, if I want, let's say all of my, I don't know, let's say I want all of my uh, A sharp notes to be um, over accentuated and more powerful than the rest of them, I would increase the velocity. Now, most MIDI keyboards have touch sensitivity in them. So the harder you play on the keyboard, the more velocity is gonna get recorded into your DAW. Uh, the lighter you play, of course, the opposite, the lighter velocity or less velocity. So this way is just a way for you to edit. Let's say you listen to it a couple times, you want to make a couple changes to the velocity. This is how you can do that. Just by, again, clicking on the note, hitting velocity, and then dragging up or down that velocity. 
okay? Now, if you wanted to add notes in the MIDI editor, you need to hit this Edit Unlock, and that's up at the top here. So slide it over, and now it's the edit window is unlocked. So if I just touch anywhere here, it's added a note, okay? Touch it again, it disappears. Okay, you can do that. You can add it wherever you want. Touch it again, it disappears. So that's how you can add extra notes in there. And once you've done that, if you want to change velocity and length of the note, you just switch it back to lock. So it locks the note in place. And I can drag this across to make the note longer. I can touch it again, edit the velocity, or I can get rid of the note altogether. So that's how you can use the MIDI edit screen within GarageBand. It's pretty simple to use. Uh, once you start moving your way around it, everything's locked in the grid. It's uh, very easy to, to do. And then the only other thing I wanted to show is uh, when I come back here, now when you're recording, maybe you're not a good keyboard player like me and you're playing a little bit off. So you wanna do what's called quantizing as you're recording it. So what, how you do that is if you just click on the effects or settings on your virtual instrument, go to track settings, hit quantizing. So quantizing is just gonna basically move the notes that you've played as close to the grid based on the time signature that you've set, okay? So if you're playing uh, notes that are fast, let's say lots of notes uh, like a 1E and a 2E and a 3E, that's a 16th note, okay? So you would set that straight 16th note for your quantizing. If you're playing a one and two and three and that's an eighth note, so you would set it accordingly. And basically it's just gonna nudge your recording the notes to the closest eighth note or 16th note, whatever you set, uh, to try and keep things in time with the beat. So again, it all depends on how you've set your song up uh, what your time signature is, and if you're using a swing tempo or a triplet or just a standard one, two, three, four. Uh, so that's the only other thing that I'd suggest. Other than that, that's pretty straightforward when it comes to MIDI instruments, MIDI keyboards connected to GarageBand and iOS. This is iOS 14, by the way, on an iPad Air 2, so it's a few years old, still has no problem working. So thanks for being here. Uh, if you want to uh, tell YouTube that you like these types of videos, just hit that like button below. And if you wouldn't mind hitting subscribe and the notification bell to be notified of other videos that we put out for home studio recording and mobile recording. So anyway, wanted to thank you very much for being here. Keep making music.